Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. Last week I was merrily home labbing away when all of a sudden disaster struck. I received a notification. Worse than that, it was a notification from TrueNAS, which usually means one thing. I've obviously got it set up to alert me to whenever system events occur, and in this case it's probably one of the worst things that can happen. A drive failure, or at least a report of a drive failure. Now in the past I've had TrueNAS say to me this drive has faltered during a smart test and I've simply rerun a test and it's disappeared. I've checked online and that does happen from time to time so I was not too bothered. However this time it didn't clear it. So I looked at the error more specifically, I correlated that online and yeah it looks like I've got unreadable sectors on my drive i.e. is a failed drive. Now thankfully, because I had this as an enterprise drive, brand new, I had a five year warranty. And if you can afford it, I do recommend for those reasons you do get enterprise drives, but I totally appreciate if you can't. And sometimes if you get it for the right price, you can probably buy some spares anyway and just swap them out when the drive fails. Anyway, I thought I'd make this video as kind of a, not a really a tutorial on a specific application. Moreover, what do you do when this happens? As you know, I love TrueNAS. I advocate people to use it. I've even done some videos on it but I haven't actually covered what happens if it goes wrong. Now, this is in a physical setup, i.e. I have a server and it has drives and it just has TrueNAS installed on it, but the same sort of process can apply for if you're doing it virtually. I might do that in a future video, but pretty much the principle is gonna be the same. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to basically offline a disk. I'll give you a quick recap of what my TrueNAS server looks like. I'll talk to you a little bit about the RME process which I had, which scan computers, you did a great job for me, thank you. And then repopulating the NAS and starting that resilvering process. Now before we get into that, I've got mine set up with a RAID 2 pool. That means that I've got two disks worth of redundancy in my pool. It means that basically two drives have to fail and I've still got a pool, but if another one fails, then I'm in trouble, I've got data loss, and that's non-recoverable. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I run a 3-2-1 backup strategy, and I recommend you do the same. Before you start home labbing, before you start putting all your eggs into your home lab, i.e. things like your password manager, these are things you do not wanna lose if you don't have backups, and I say backups, plural. So you should have three copies of your data, you wanna have two local and one remote. In my instance, I've got the data on my cluster. So that's right, it's clustered. Therefore, I have multiple copies of my data already live, which are on those systems. But obviously, if there was some sort of data corruption, malware, whatever, that could render those unusable. I actually do backups of those virtual machines as well to my NAS, and I do that with Proxmox backup server. But I also have basically all of my shares. So these are less virtual machine data, these are things like photos, media, um, actual working documents. Now these are network shares on my TrueNAS. And as I've just mentioned, those are on RAID setups, software RAID using ZFS. But again, a RAID isn't a backup. So all of my important data from my NAS is replicated up in the cloud using our clone. And that gives me that 3-2-1 setup. So I'm gonna hop into the process now, walk you through what this actually looks like in the web user interface. So the first thing I need to know is which pool has this impacted? Now I have two pools, one was my original pool and then another one that I've created. I found out that ironically it was in the newer pool and that's using newer drives. Now you're probably thinking, you're not new to this, you've probably done this multiple times before. Actually, this is the first time I've had a drive fail on me, or at least have a drive fail that wasn't dead on arrival. Now, typically, that's because I've only been sort of home loving for about seven years, and within that seven year period, I've never had a drive fail. Again, I've always used enterprise drives. So actually, this was a bit of a learning experience. Thankfully, TrueNAS, hats off to you guys, you make this dead simple. It's as simple as logging into your TrueNAS, Having a look at which share, you'll see it'll say things like degraded. Going into it, clicking on the disk drive that's faulty, and then clicking offline it. That basically shuts the drive down and tells TrueNAS that it's no longer active within this RAID, i.e. it's basically switched off. Once I'd done that, I took my NAS out of the rack. I made sure beforehand that 
anything that was writing to it, I stopped. So things like my frigate container, etc., Plex Media. I didn't want anything trying to be looking for data and it couldn't get it. So I made sure as much as possible, everything was disconnected. I pulled out my NAS, pulled the cover off and then had a quick look through. Now, as you can see on the video in front of you, this is a pretty basic case. It's good enough for what I need in a home lab, but it's an absolute pig if you need to change a drive because you basically need to disconnect everything because of the cables I've used. Now, the actual mechanism is on a hinge and I could probably tip that if the cables were longer, but these are the cables I had. I didn't want to go and buy an extra 15 SATA cables and power cables, etc. if I didn't need them. So I typically do this maybe once or twice a year at most. But hey, if any of you guys are out there that want to sponsor me with a nice new shiny case, I'm not going to pass on the offer. Now you might be thinking, how do I know which drive it is? Well, thankfully in TrueNAS, it gives you the serial number of the drive. And now all of the hard drives I have, have that serial number printed on them. So happy days. It was simply a case of finding out which drive had faulted and then making sure to pull that out exhaustively checking them all and double checking just to make sure I didn't have any errors. Once that drive was removed, it was time to then go through the RMA process. I did seal back up my NAS. I did put it back into my server rack. I did turn it back on and connect everything. And I was relatively comfortable because again, RAIDs 2, I've still got one extra parity drive there for redundancy. So I could still have another drive fail before I'd have any risk of actually losing data. More on that later. Thankfully, the RMA process was really swift and I was checking my inbox like a maniac, hoping that they would come back and say, yes, they detected the fault. The worst case scenario would be they didn't detect a fault. They're not willing to replace the drive and I'd have to pony up for £200 to get a new drive. Thankfully, really quickly, they did detect the fault and the next day my drive arrived. So again, case of down power, take everything off, whip the case up, get that drive back in, power everything on. Trust me, I've done this before when I've actually missed a power cable. That wasn't fun. Made sure that everything was in, booted it back up, and all of the drives were detected. So then it was a case of hopping back into the GUI in TrueNAS, just double checking what was there. And actually, instead, you can click to replace a drive. So that device that's no longer physically in the machine is still registered on there as part of that pool. So I basically said, I want to replace that drive. And as you can see, it gives you the option of which drive you want to replace with it. Now, it has to be a drive of at least equal size, but you could use a larger drive. You might think, why do I want to do that? Well, let's say in this instance, all my drives are 16 terabyte. Maybe I want to buy a load of 20 terabytes in the future. And then over time, as each drive fails, each one would slowly be replaced with a 20. And once they're all 20, you'd have the combined space of all those 20s. So now that that drive was back and I'd been selected, you've probably heard of the process or you might not of resilvering. That's just basically a fancy way of saying, hey, we're going to put that disk into the pool and we're going to write all of that data, that parity data, etc., onto that new disk. That's going to take me back up to having that full RAIDS 2, two disks of parity. And that process for me, you get a little bit sweaty as well just because at this time you've got to be thinking it's reading and writing all of that time and it was for 24 hours and so even though i had one drive extra redundancy i was still a little bit scared but now thankfully that's all concluded it took a day but i'm actually back to where i started so i just wanted to share that experience with you and again why i advocate the use of having raids too just to give you that little bit extra breathing room if you need it anyway Thank you for watching. Let me know if you've ever had to do anything like this before. Let me know the good, the bad and the ugly. And hopefully we can help some other people to avoid any pitfalls or at least some worry. If you've got a NAS, if you're running true NAS, you should plan ahead for this scenario. It will happen at some point. Anyway, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.